Whenever astronomers talk about the galaxy that we live in, they don't talk about it in terms of miles and talk, describing the distance, but in terms of light years. A light year simply being the uh, distance that light can travel in a year's time. And since light travels at 186,000 miles a second, multiplying that out, a light year means that light will have traveled 5 trillion, 865 billion, 696 million miles. The size of the Milky Way galaxy in which we are located has been described as being about 120,000 light years across. And it's only a part of the Virgo supercluster, which is said to be 150 million light years across. So if you want to know how big that is in terms of where we're at here on this Earth, you would simply divide or multiply rather 150 million times 6 billion miles to get some idea of the size of it. Now, the reason I bring that out, I think that's so significant, is because of a statement that was made by the psalmist in Psalms 103 in verse 11, when he says, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. You think about the size just of our galaxy that we're living within and within the Virgo multicluster, how big that is. And the Bible says if you want to know about the love of God, about the steadfast love of God, it's that great. Just think how huge this galaxy is we're living in. But the steadfast love of God is far greater than that. Jeremiah, at the time of his depressions, when Jerusalem had been destroyed and he sits on the side of the city or hill watching that city and seeing its complete destruction, even in a time like that, he finds hope because he makes a statement there in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 24 about the hope that he has because of the steadfast love of God. He says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in Him. And so the steadfast love of God, far greater than anything that we can think of, compared to this universe, far in excess of that. And that steadfast love is what gives to us hope in life, regardless of the situation we're in. Alexander Pope, in one of his writings, an essay on man, wrote that hope springs eternal. But there's a basis for the hope that we as Christians have. Our hope is based upon that steadfast love of God. Jesus said in John 14, 23, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. The steadfast love of God is available for everyone who loves Jesus and shows that love by obeying him. And so that means that those of us who are Christians we can have great hope in this world because of that steadfast love of God that He has toward us. But it also means that if you're not a Christian yet, if you're not a child of God, you don't have that hope then. And you don't have the promise of that steadfast love. God loves everybody, but He has a special love for those that love His Son and keep His will. And so tonight, if you're not a Christian we extend the invitation of Christ to you that you, by your faith in Jesus, would repent of your sins, confess your faith in Christ, and be buried with Him in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And when you do that, know that you have hope because of that steadfast love of God that is extended toward you. If you're here as God's child and you aren't living faithful to Him, then we would encourage you to correct that tonight by repenting of your sins and praying to God for the forgiveness you need that you might again Stand within that steadfast love of God and have that hope and have that life with God eternally in heaven. If you're subject to this invitation, we encourage you, please come to him now while we stand and sing.